Hello, hello. Yeah, I don't wanna slow down, I don't wanna slow down, I don't wanna slow down till I burn. Hello. I don't know if you can see fully, but I have like business up top and then below is like my sweatpants. This is the epitome, the epitome of work from home vibe, I feel like. You know, if you have meetings, you need to dress appropriately up top and then down below is like all party. Just hopefully you're wearing pants. I am wearing pants, thank goodness. Okay, let's get started. Today I wanted to sit down with you and just have a really candid conversation about what to do when you are stuck on a bug. When you have a problem that you cannot solve in your code, what do you do? Especially when we are starting out, okay, wait, let me scratch that actually. Really throughout our career, there are times where we can't solve something and the thought or the feeling of, oh my gosh, I have no idea what I am doing, I am a fraud, what is going on can take over and become very overwhelming. Today, I am going to talk to you and share with you how I really go about breaking down a coding problem that I am trying to solve. And if I can't solve it, the steps I do to solve it. Before we get into it though, make sure to hit that subscribe button for more tech and coding related videos. Leave in the comments some other topics you want me to cover and uh, let's get into it. I remember when I was first starting to code, those feelings of getting stuck every two minutes and it just never went away. That was so frustrating, you know, constantly needing help as I grew my skills. And it's normal and people say, people tell you it's normal, but when you're in that position, it never feels totally normal and it sucks. And I don't wanna sugarcoat it or say there's anything different. It just genuinely sucks. Those moments where you're just stuck, it's not easy and it can be really frustrating. As I grew my career, there were highs and lows, I would say, sometimes where I felt on top of the world, like I knew everything, all coding problems that were coming my way, I thought I completely knew how to solve, and I did. And then it's kind of like almost a mountain or hills where it's like, you're doing great and then it falls, and you're doing great and then it falls, and it's definitely a roller coaster ride, so all I have to say to that is buckle up. Although as your career grows and your skills grow, these moments of what the heck am I doing maybe become less and less. They never go away. I'm never going to say that because they really don't. But throughout my career anyways, as a software developer, I've really found different techniques and tactics to help me get to the answer quicker, uh, to solving a problem quicker than I did when I was first starting out. Now, I wanna make one more little side note here that these are tips and tricks that I use but to say that I sometimes forget to use them or it's easier said than done, that's very true. I think often, you know, we have these great ideas or great advice, but to always implement them, that's a different story. But I try and stick with them as much as possible. If I am solving a problem or facing a bug or a defect in the code base and I cannot solve it, I've been staring at my screen for a long time, the first thing I do is always get away from the computer, back away from it. And I know this is nothing new, no, this is no mind blowing tip. Lots of people do this. But the key here is to actually do it. We often think we're going to do it or say we're going to do it, but we don't take that time to do it. And I think this is because we get so stressed out about what we are working on that we just go, okay, well, I can't, I have to fix it now. Like I just, I need to. And in turn, we don't actually listen to our you know, brains, our logic side of things, but it's like, we need a break, we need to unwind and just step away from the computer. So my biggest piece of advice is the first thing I do if I cannot solve something and I've been staring at my screen for a little bit too long is to go for a walk. And don't just go for a, you know, a 10 second walk to your kitchen or anything like that. Like get out of your house, take 30 minutes and just get away from your computer. It, it's so important and it sounds so obvious, but until you actually do it, you will not see how impactful this can be. Once I come back from taking a step back from my computer, if I spend a bit more time on it and I'm still not able to find a resolution to the defect, there are two things I kind of do. The first thing I will do is I'll either speak out loud or write it down what exactly I am trying to do and where I am stuck. And I will always phrase this in a question, the form of a question. So I'll be like, this is what I am trying to do. Where I am stuck is this, but how do I, but, and then specify in the question what part you are stuck on. So my question is, 
I am having trouble doing this, this, and this. Here's my research for this. And okay, I'm using a lot of this, but I think you get what I'm saying. Really breaking down the problem because a lot of times when we are stuck on a problem for a while, we actually forget or lose sight of what the actual problem is because we're just so stressed about having a problem. Is that just me? I feel like I got really passionate there. Um, but it definitely is a thing where you forget about what problem you're really trying to solve because you're just so overwhelmed with everything else going on. If after I have gone for a walk, stepped away from the computer, spoke out loud what I'm trying to do or written it down, the last thing I will do or the second last thing I will do is time block. And I find this really important because I'm someone who otherwise will spend days, days or a day, depending on the defect, uh, trying to figure it out on my own before I ask for help. And I really don't think that's the right way of going about things. I think it's so important to ask for help because that really is how we learn. And for myself, if I don't time block, I'll just be too, I just let my ego get in the way and I'm just like, no, Tiff, don't ask for help, just figure it out on your own. But then so much time is wasted that could have been used for other things if I would have just asked for help right away. For me, depending on the defect and the urgency of getting it resolved, this might be time blocking for an hour, for two hours, and if I still can't resolve it, that is when I go ask for help. Now, everyone's company or organization is structured differently for who to ask for help. For me, it's either my mentor or my dev lead at work or um, anyone that I can really trust and have some context into what I am working on. Okay, I feel like I need a coffee break. Give me a sec here. Also, do you like the Tiff and Tech mug? Like what? It's pretty cool. <laughs> It's just the best thing in the world, I'm telling you. When I go to ask for help, I really structure it in a way that is clear for the person to understand. My biggest pet peeve at work, or in general, I should say, is when someone comes to ask me for help. I love helping people when I can and where I can, and I mean, I love that, but if you're coming to me and you're saying, I need help, I can't figure this out, and you don't send me a link to the ticket you're working on, break down what part you are stuck on, what you have tried, and what your specific question is, we are going to waste so much time just uncovering that basic information. So I always make sure when I'm asking someone for help that I give that to them. I send a link to what I'm working on, I break down what I have tried, send some links to articles that I've researched and different implementations I have done, and then I also ask a very, at the very end of my kind of note to this person is the question. And I literally type, my question is, followed by the question of a very specific question that I'm asking them. Otherwise, it's just for the person on the other end, it can be overwhelming as to like, whoa, okay, I get you need help, but like, help me understand how to help you. And I think that's a really key thing when we are asking questions. At the end of the day though, no one has it all figured out. And I want you to remember that. And I'm telling myself that as I'm sitting here right now, because we all have highs and lows. We all go through different periods of time where we know, feel like we know so much and then we feel like we know so little. And it's just this cycle or this circle of learning and being a forever learner. And I just wanna let you know that it's okay. Don't get down on yourself. Don't lose patience on yourself. Don't doubt yourself. We got this, you got this, we've all been there. And as long as we are willing to put ourselves forward and put ourselves out there that we want to learn and grow and get comfortable with being uncomfortable, it's, the sky is the limit and I know we got this. I'm curious to know though, what are some other tips or things that you do to help you uncover how to solve different defects? Leave in the comments. I hope you found this video very helpful and valuable and I will see you all soon. Thanks everyone. Now we gotta go back to coding. Coding time.